Morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this webinar, which is all about Viva Amplify and elevating your communications campaigns. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I'm technical account manager here at IntelliJ. Pleased to say I'm joined by Alex today. Alex, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm Alex Franklin. Um, I lead the teamwork and employee experience practice here at IntelliJ. And Alex is doing most of the work today, which is why I'm particularly yeah. pleased that Alex is joining us. Uh, and we're going to be talking to you all about Viva Amplify which is um, fairly new and launched towards the end of last year, um, aimed at internal communicators. Uh, and, and it's really, I think, Microsoft acknowledging the importance of internal communications uh, across your organizations. And um, I don't like keep referring back to the, the, the pandemic, but I think we certainly saw um, the importance of internal comms really ramp up during that time. And if your communications team didn't feel valued before, then um, I'm sure you do much more now. And also it reflects, you know, there's lots of tools within Microsoft 365 for communication and Viva Amplify is about kind of managing those better and bringing them all together. So that's what we're going to be covering for you today. And uh, if you've got any questions for us as we go through, we'd love to hear them uh, and we'll um, we'll answer those either as they come in or maybe towards the end, uh, depending on what we see from you. So um, let, let's make a start, shall we, without further ado. Uh, so um, this is our agenda today. I'm going to start with a brief overview of what Viva Amplify is all about. Then I can hand you over to Alex to take over with a demo and also some real world kind of feedback and use cases, how we're um, seeing it being used in, in other industries, other organizations. Um, we'll talk about onboarding and how you would uh, start to use the tool if you're interested in doing so. Uh, and there'll be a few things to consider around that licensing being one of them. Um, there is uh, uh, some cost to the to the tool, so we'll cover that off towards the end, uh, so you're fully aware of all those kind of things as well. Uh, I just thought I'd start for those of you who don't know us by introducing IntelliJ. Uh, we're a Microsoft Cloud Solutions partner uh, with a real broad offering. Um, we're all about making the most of your investment in Microsoft licensing and Microsoft technology, and we do that with a real focus on quality and innovation. And we've been doing it for a long time, so uh, nearly 30 years in the business now. Uh, we've been around uh, and lots of um, experience and, and knowledge to bring to the table. Um, looking at our different business areas there, so teamwork and employee experience, starting from the left, that's Alex's area, um, and that covers you know a lot around communication, intranet, uh, Viva, Teams, those kind of tools. Uh, then we've got knowledge and information management, which is about how data is stored and governed. Content AI is about how data is um, surfaced uh, and processed. Uh, and then business applications. So we've got lots of uh, uh, development areas around Power Platform within the low code space, uh, but we also do pro code development as well. And then cloud platform security is about device management, security, um, identity management, all those kind of things. And then lastly, we've got managed services there. So that's about protecting your investments going forward uh, and providing the support you need on an ongoing basis. And we'll be um, hopefully looking to do some webinars in some of these other areas in the future as well. Just then moving on to Viva Amplify, uh, what it's all about. There's a screenshot on the right hand side there, but Alex is going to uh, demonstrate that in, in practice in a moment. Um, but there's a number of key things that Viva Amplify is looking to do. So it's overcoming the challenge really uh, of disparate tools for communication and having to do things differently in, in, within those different tools. So, what um, Viva Amplify will do is bring everything together in one place and enable you and your team to um, collaborate in one place to build all your communications and then distribute those across multiple channels. So that could be your intranet within SharePoint, it could be Outlook, it could be Teams, it could be Viva Engage, and you might have different audiences that uh, rely on those different channels. Uh, the tool will give you lots of insights and analytics on how your content is being accessed. Obviously, it's important to measure the success of your comms, uh, and there's lots of information there to enable you to do that. And again, Alex will show you some examples of that going forward. Um, lots of management tools in there as well for things like scheduling. So it might be that you're you know, creating a, a communication campaign right now. Maybe it's not going to go out until first thing Monday morning, but you can be doing all of that uh, and building that in the plan as well, but also uh, ensuring relevance to your different audiences. So for the different tools and the different parts of your business, you could be you know, changing that message and, and making sure it's completely relevant to the people that are going to see it. So what does that mean for your employees then? Well, everyone is hopefully seeing a consistent message. They're seeing it in a way that's relevant to them and in the, the best tool for the job. So, you know, capturing everyone in the way that is uh, going to be most relevant to how they work. 
So what does that mean in practice? Well, um, it's a SharePoint based tool. Um, so uh, each uh, campaign that you create within vGramify has its own SharePoint site, it has its own Microsoft team, uh, and you'd be creating your comms within there, you know, much like you may be creating your, your uh, internet articles right now, but you can be creating those comms to then distribute across multiple channels. Um, those articles could be going out via Teams, SharePoint, email, various ways. Um, uh, and we'll also cover off how Viva Engage will we'll come into that in the future. Um, there's approval processes, so you might have a big team working on things uh, and you can have an approver in place that's uh, looking over all the different things that different people are doing. Uh, and as I said, you can be scheduling things so that you can be uh, planning for the future as well. And then obviously, uh, as you'd expect from SharePoint, we've got different roles, different access rights so that we can allow people to do all the different things they need to do in the right way. Uh, so. Uh, at this point, Alex, I'm going to hand over to you to take over with a bit of a demonstration. Sure thing. Right, so I'll take the laptop. So what I'm going to do in this demonstration is start with the basics about Amplify and then start to think about the bigger picture because there's a lot more to it than just using a tool. It's always more than just the tool. It's about how it works within the grander scheme of things. So I'm in um, just the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 homepage here. As you would expect with anything on here, it's not that you download an application or install any software. It's all based in the browser. And if I come to my app launcher up here, I can either go to Amplify straight away or I can maybe jump to the Viva homepage and then from there get access to all of my Viva applications down here. In this case, I jump into Amplify. <clears throat> so when I'm in here, I jump into Amplify and the first thing that I see is my campaigns. So campaigns have different members. And so as with anything, I only see what I'm permitted to see. So because these are the campaigns I'm a member of, these are the ones that I see. And you'll notice that two of these are draft. One of these has a mark on it saying live. The reason why that one is live is because something has been sent. We have sent a communication from this. Therefore, this is now an active campaign. So it keeps these flags here for us. And I want to start just by talking through the basics of setting these things up. So if I click to create a campaign, I can choose a pre-built campaign. There's not much in there at the moment. It has some pre-built stuff for Copilot or Viva for AI. But if I just cancel that and start again, I'm going to create a blank campaign. And the first thing we do here is we name our campaign. And, um, I was trying to think of what I would be calling this in a demo this morning while I was um, slowly making my way up the N25, but I ended up uh, going back to wanting to pay homage to somebody who um, I know is attending this, who shared with me their communication campaign they're working on, and I loved it because I love a good pun. And so um, I hope she doesn't mind me paying homage to her and basing this on a flu campaign um, that they are doing. So it was knowing me, knowing flu, aha. And then we put in our description here. We choose our language. We can only choose one, um, but obviously here I'm going to choose English. And then we choose a color to be associated with this campaign. Now I choose next. And this is where we start to think about who's going to be involved. Who am I collaborating with? This isn't about who I'm sending it to. This is about who I'm actually working with on the campaign. So I'm going to click in here and suggest, right, we're going to have Megan and we're going to have Deborah and we're going to have Diego. And I can set different roles to the people. So those that are working with me on this campaign, if they're an editor, it means that they can come in and they can create publications, they can edit things, they can send things out. Um, but I can also make Megan an approver. And what that means is that when it comes to the publishing stage, which I'll show you in a minute, if we want to seek approval and sign off on things before they go out, these are the people, whoever is tagged. It can be one or it can be many. And I can also set owners. So owners have full control over this. They can create, edit, delete, or delete the entire campaign. And then when I'm done, I simply, simply click Create and create the campaign. So what this is doing behind the scenes is a number of things. It's creating a Microsoft 365 group. It's creating a SharePoint site. It's creating a team. And then it's putting it together for me in my new campaign that we have. And if you notice up here, it's a site. 
This is just a SharePoint site, but it's tailored for Viva Amplify because if I try and access the site just itself, it will take me here, it will take me into the site, but then it's going to redirect me back to Viva because this is a, a Viva Amplify specific site. And so when I'm in here, I have the overview of my campaign, I have my recent publications, resources I might want to add, and then I have my campaign brief. So this is where I might want to put things for my colleagues to follow. So I've got my campaign objectives, I've got the key messages. We also have goals that we might want to set. So we want to make sure that we get at least 50% coverage across our organization, at least 50% of people that are interacting or viewing the communications we send. So we can put that goal in here, and then based on the reporting mechanisms that come out at the end of it, it will tell us whether or not we've reached that goal, and we can then keep an eye on things from there. But then I can come through to publications, and this is where I can start to create these communications. And so if I click on new to create something here, this will probably look familiar to many people that are on this webinar. So if you've used SharePoint for your intranets and you've created news on it, you may be aware that there's two different types of news that you create. There's your standard news, which is a fully fledged SharePoint page. It's not really any different other than it has um, to post rather than publish. It has all the features. But one of the things that was introduced, I think it was earlier this year, um, is the made for email template in SharePoint. And that's kind of a cut down version of SharePoint news pages. Um, it has fewer web parts available to you. So you see these over the right hand side, we've got text and image files, media, the key common things really that you would put into news. And the reason why it's a cut down version is because it's designed in a way that makes it more versatile. So it's something that will work in SharePoint. It's something that will also work in email. And in this case, it will also work in Teams. So I can start building out my first publication. So that's, and then I can put any text that I want in here. So this is where I add the body, oh, add the body. And we can add images in here. We can add um, links to people, hyperlinks, quick links, whatever it is that we want to have. Maybe add some stock images in there, pretty it up whatever we want to do. For this part, I'm just going to keep it very simple though. And when we've built out our publication, we click next. That's going to save it and then take us through to when we can, where we can start thinking about how we want this to be sent. So you see that I'm previewing it now for Outlook. So this is where I can see how my message will look when it's an Outlook. I can choose my subject to Subject to CC, BCC. Also, it's coming from me, but if we have um, delegation enabled and I'm permitted to do so, I can actually send this on behalf of other people. So quite often with communications, um, I don't want it to come from me. I want it to somebody that maybe has more visibility, maybe more credibility within the organization. Perhaps I want it to come from the CEO. And if permitted to do so, I can put other people's names in here and then this message will appear to come from them rather than from me. And from here, I can flip over to SharePoint. Again, I see how it looks there. And then I can come to Teams and see how it will look in Teams. It is a little bit more basic in Teams, but in each case, I can edit the interface on all of this so that it will be tailored. So if I, if I have something that looks great in Outlook and SharePoint, but not in Teams, I can then adjust it so that it looks nicer in Teams. And I've just seen a question pop oh. up that was perfectly timed because <laughs> I was about to raise that um, about Viva Engage. So Viva Engage isn't supported yet. It is coming. The last time I looked at the roadmap, um, it was saying it was going to be spring next year. So Viva Engage will be in here. It's just not here yet. I've got a question, Alex. So I noticed you've got some limits shown. So for example, we're limited to five Teams channels. I think yep. we're limited to 200 email addresses. So are those um, physical limits uh, for everyone across the board? Yeah, so with Teams, I can post to five channels. When I post to a channel here, um, the one thing to bear in mind is I can't just type in general. 
because okay. every single team has a general channel. What I would do is type the name of the team, okay. and then it will post a general. But then I can post two individual channels should I want to. Um, it's also worth noting that I can only post to teams that I am permitted to access. So if I want to send to a managerial team, but I don't have access to that team, I'm not a member, I can't post to it because of obvious security reasons. But with the limit on Outlook, to be honest, if you are sending to 200 people, um, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Mm. Um, so maybe you want to think about streamlining it into groups and things like that. So, so that could be 200 groups. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you would choose your groups. You would maybe CC to individual people if you want to, but it's all over there. And then with SharePoint, I can choose up to 10 sites. So I can click here, and then I can either suggest get my suggested sites, or I can type in the name of the site and then post to that, and it will show up as news in a feed on the home page of that site or wherever else it's configured to go. So we've got our message in Outlook. We've got it in SharePoint. We've got it in Teams. We can adjust where we want. If we don't want to send to one of these, we only want to send it to Outlook or SharePoint, I can click here, and then I can just take away the ones that I don't want to use, because we don't always want to send to all three. It might be that we want to send it to 10 SharePoint sites, but no Outlook or Teams. However you want it to be, that's how it is. And then when I'm done, if I want to publish this, I've got my publish options up here. And I can choose one of three. I can publish now, which means this will fire away straight away. And it will go to all the mediums that I've chosen. It will go to all the audiences that I've chosen straight away. I can schedule to publish. So if I finish this on a Thursday afternoon at four o'clock, I'm not in on Friday, but we know this is something that has to go out at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning, I can schedule it. And then eight o'clock on Monday morning, it will go out to all the audiences automatically. I can also request approval. And then when I request approval, that's where I can select one, some, or all of the approvers that are in our campaign. And then I can say, right, I need it so that if only one of them approves, that's good enough, or I need everyone to approve. And then it will give me the choice of, well, what happens when they approve? What do you want me to do? When they approve, I can state, either publish it immediately, schedule it to publish at Monday, 8 o'clock, or do nothing. So when it's do nothing, it will then allow me to come back in. I'll be told that it's been approved, and then I can come in and choose when I want to publish it. And I've seen a, mess, a question just come up. Are they Teams groups or permission groups you can email to? So think of it as no different to me opening Outlook. And, um, and the, another question here about uh, email to distribution lists. Of course, it's no different to using Outlook. So if, if I can go into Outlook and type in a group name and send to that group, I can do it in here as well. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. So it's all very open. Lots of good questions, though. We've got yeah. to see so many coming in. We like questions. Yeah, keep them coming. Good. So we've got our publishing options, we've got our scheduling, we've got our approval. Um, but what I really want to show you is how this works within the bigger picture of things. Because as I, I mentioned at the start, that it's not just about the tool. Everything in Microsoft 365 is never just about the tool. It's about how the tool works with everything else in Microsoft 365, the bigger picture. So if I come out of here and I come back to Amplify, so we come out of our campaign here, and now I go into one that's pre-built here. So I go into my intranet. So we've got a campaign for a new intranet that we're going live with. And this is where we start to now think about how we bring the bigger picture in. We bring in everything else from Microsoft 365 and make this a truly collaborative, more almost project-driven um, approach to how we manage our campaigns. So in my campaign, we have all these publications. We could have dozens in here because we were prepared, of course, and everything is planned for the future. We've written these in advance. But where we start to bring everything else in, if you think, I'm using Viva Amplify. Viva Amplify is basing itself here on SharePoint. In my messages here, I now start to bring in other tools. So we're using Microsoft Forms, for example. So when our first, com when our first communication goes out, people can then come in here and have a quick link straight through to a survey where we want to gather some feedback from people on how they feel about our intranet and how they'd like to see us shape this going forward. 
But it doesn't stop there because every time we create our campaign, it creates a site. It also creates a team. And that team is immediately accessible to those who are part of this campaign. And that's where we then start to use Teams as it's meant to be used as a portal to everything else within 365. So I've gone from my campaign into our team. When I'm in our team, we have our posts. So um, those of you that are on here, there are a few of you on this session that know me and you know my dislike for email. <laughs> and so we use posts to have our conversations. They're threaded, they're visible to everybody, and it's just neat and tidy. We can start to use Microsoft Loop so that we can have collaborative conversations where we co-edit content in here. And if anyone on this call, if you haven't had a look at Loop yet, I really recommend it. And my colleagues are probably sick of me banging on about it, but I'm a massive fan. It has completely replaced OneNote for me. I live and breathe in Loop now. I think it's a fantastic product. But we can embed Loop components in here. And we can maybe have files. So we have a tab for any files that we want to share with one another. Maybe if we do want to use OneNote, any regular meetings we have as part of this project will be part of the team. And we share those in OneNote so that we can all have access to them. But also, if we're working on a communications campaign, we probably want a communications plan. And so why don't we use Microsoft Lists for that? So we have a Microsoft List brought into this team. Now that I'm here, it's, it's slower to load, but we're there. So we can have a Microsoft list. And this list might capture every communication that we need to send. It might capture the phase of the project, the method by which we're going to send it, the audience, maybe who the sender should be, and any timelines as well. So we could have dates associated. And then therefore, it can notify us when those dates are approaching. And then maybe who within this campaign is an owner of that, who's responsible for seeing this through. And we can have this as that central point that we refer to that manages everything we do throughout this campaign. But with anything like this as well, we're going to have tasks. We're going to have things we need to work on together. So let's bring in Planner. We use Planner. We have different buckets of areas of things we need to do. And we have tasks. Those tasks are assigned to people. Those tasks have due dates. Those tasks have status. And then this gives us that visibility in one place of everything we're working on. And then we get, as is with Planner, those really nice, quick and easy charts where we can see how many things are open, in progress, late, completed, whatever it might be. So we're keeping track of everything. But in that first communication, we also had a survey. So maybe we need to bring the survey results in here too. We have our survey results brought in straight to our team so that throughout the point where results are coming in, we can keep up to date on everything, come through, work together, and then link everything back into our campaign to a point where we're then ready to send things out. So I can come into here, I can edit my post, I can maybe say, right, in this case, I don't want Teams. I'll come to SharePoint. So view that, we're all good. Outlook, we're all good. I can bring, up, bring out my properties, choose what I want to do. And then when I'm ready to go, I can publish. So I could maybe say publish now. And if I haven't populated everything, it will say, actually, no, you need to review this and choose who you're going to be sending stuff to. And I specify my recipients. I specify my SharePoint sites. So if I come here and I choose the landing, if I come to Outlook. I then say, I'll just keep this easy and I'll send it to Megan. I now publish this. And then it's going to give me a summary. So before I do anything, it's going to tell me this is what I'm going to do. So it's going to send to Outlook to these people. It's going to send to SharePoint to there. And then when I'm done, I publish. This will wear away in the background. Um, it takes a few seconds to run, but it's going to say, right, we're working out what to do. We're sending things out. And then in a moment, all being well, this is the point where we get a little bit nervous in our <laughs> demonstration. So um, if I come to the landing. Whilst you're doing that, Alex, I was just going um, gonna to comment that I, I like the way in that news article you created, you really thought about the layout and how it was going to kind of be consumed by the user. You had like nice headings and you had yeah. kind of subsections and stuff. So it kind of shows a good example of 
a joined up kind of intranet strategy, com strategy, and also across all those other tools you mentioned. Yeah. You know, we're also it, focusing on Amplify today, but there's loads of other things. Exactly. You can be using. And like I say, it's never about the tool. It's about um, how the tool works with everything else. Mm. And it makes it that much more project man management focused kind of thing. So if I refresh this page, hopefully this is updated now. If not, I'll come back to it in a short while. There we are. Perfect. There's our company feed. We're embarking on an exciting journey. And there we go. So it's all very straightforward stuff. There's nothing that's necessarily rocket science about it. Um, there are a few points that you do need to bear in mind, which um, I'll be coming back to on a slide in mm. a short while. But that's it in a nutshell. We create our campaigns. We work on them together in teams. We publish, we approve, we schedule, however it needs to be. Perfect. I can see we've got a few questions, actually. From, maybe we just tackle those now. Yep. Uh, someone asked if you can embed the stream web part into Amplify content. So with Amplify content, because it's in a simplified view, I believe it is um, that you'll, you'll get the link there, but you click and it launches stream. I'm not sure if it actually embeds it within the email. Um, you do need to click it, and then away it goes. Yeah. Uh, we might come back to a couple of these towards the end because they're things that we can cover in a moment. Um, someone's asked about what if we don't use SharePoint for our internet? Um, we also don't use OneDrive SharePoint for file sharing, but a non-MS product. Um, so that does complicate things. Um, if you are not using a SharePoint-based intranet and you're using some other product, um, it's a bit of a tricky one. Um, it's because this is based on Microsoft, it is a SharePoint and Microsoft driven one. So you might have some troubles connecting things in there um, and it might be slightly limited on that. Um, and there is another question from somebody. I'll come back to that because it's okay. um, covered at the end of another slide. But if I move on now to some of the reporting side, if this is going to let me go over. There we go. Uh, while we work out why PowerPoint won't move. There we go. So you do get analytics as part of this as well. And um, this is changing quite regularly as well, actually. They're improving this as time goes by, and it's, it's getting better all the time. But you do get some pretty detailed and pretty decent analytics that come into this so that when this goes out to everybody, you can see how much uptake is getting. We saw at the start when I created a campaign that um, we had a goal that we wanted to have 50% um, um, viewership across our organization and that's powered by the analytics so I can see that we've had this amount of people that have viewed this message in Outlook this many in SharePoint teams etc now some of the Microsoft provided imagery here um, that you'll see does include engage I'm not sure why it's included this early but it is um, so all of that is there and you get to see how many people have viewed it you get to see things like how many people have liked it or commented on it or shared it and things like that so you get to then analyze that data by different functions and audiences it doesn't go down to the individual so you don't get to see the specific names of people um, for very good reason much as a number of products don't but you do get to see a really clear and good view of how the uptake of this message has gone and in some examples as well um, you can use it to say right okay we're getting 90% viewership in Outlook, but only 10% viewership in SharePoint. Maybe we need to work on better adoption of SharePoint here because we want people to go to these tools. We want people to go to our intranet. And then we can do certain things to help out with that, some of which are covered in some use cases I'll talk about in a moment. But since this first came out, um, I've been talking about it quite a lot with a number of different people. And um, we're working actively with some customers to get this implemented. Um, we're in discussions with others, um, but I've taken a few bits of feedback from them. Um, in some cases, when I've, I've, I've done this and I've asked people if I can take that quote, and I did it under the promise of anonymity, and so as a result, I also had to promise you that they're not just made up, they are genuine. Um, so there's a real mixed bag. So I want to be honest, with everything, you can never please everybody, and it isn't always the right tool for a number of different reasons. There are reasons why it might be a good fit, reasons why it might not. But generally, it's a positive feedback. And you see that we've got uh, comments that people like the project management side of it, um, how it brings everything together into one place. We're using all these different things to get it all together in one collaborative view. We have um, another 
perfectly valid statement, which was, it would definitely save us time, but can we justify the cost? Because there is a licensing implication for this, which Jeremy will be talking about shortly. Other people thinking it could remove the need for a third party newsletter tool. And probably my favorite one, um, which was in person in a, in a meeting room, someone simply said, oh my, this has to happen. <laughs> and they were very excited. And when other people get excited, so do I. And oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to just jump back a moment because there's one other point I want to make. Um, one of the other statements was from one person who said they'd like it to have better multilingual abilities. And I definitely agree with that because we work with a number of customers that are global and communications need to be sent in, um, it could be in two languages, it could be in 10 languages in some cases. And SharePoint does have multilingual capabilities. It does have the ability for me to open a page and it will be, I'll be able to view it in my native tongue. Um, but this doesn't quite support that as well yet. Um, I, would, I would like to think hopefully in time there will be better capabilities, but it doesn't stop you from having multilingual communications because you can just create multiple publications and just re-rinse the same one, but translate it into the correct language. So it doesn't stop you. It's just not quite as seamless as the native SharePoint experience. And some use cases that we've observed and thought about um, based on our observations across a great many different companies we work with. We, we span a very, very large amount of industries, a large amount of companies that we work with across the world. And we have different scenarios that show relevance to this. And so in one example, we have an organization that has a largely leader engaged based intranet. Um, obviously, Amplify doesn't support it yet. But when it does, in their scenario where they have content that's mostly in communities and then staff use shortcuts to them and so they don't always have everyone going into a home, we can use Amplify to publish via these multiple places and send it to those multiple communities once we're able to do so. So it helps us get that message out a bit easier if we're in a slightly decentralized approach. We have another example where there's a bit more of a static SharePoint intranet for key resources, but in this case, everything's largely held in Teams. And the same principle applies there. We can publish in SharePoint while also publishing to these Teams that people use for their ongoing communications, which is in an open environment. We also have um, one example where there is an internet in place, but staff are very, very wedded to email and there's quite a low adoption of SharePoint. And what we're hoping to do here is use Bigger Amplify, first of all, so that we know we can get that message out but we use it as a way to entice people in. So we're publishing in SharePoint, we're having that sent out to people via email, but we're not putting the full picture, we're not putting the full article in there. What we're doing is we're putting something that's almost clickbait, if you will. And so we're putting enough so that people will click to view more. That will take them into SharePoint so that we start to encourage people in. And then when they're in SharePoint, we can have feeds that have more news articles and help them to get around, much like if I open up the MSN homepage when I'm about to do something work related and I always get distracted by an article and jump off and learn about something irrelevant. But getting people in, getting people adopting it. Um, we also have an example where we have a gradual deployment underway for an organization that's very, very new to 365. And we're gonna use it as, um, well, we're hoping to use it anyway, as a method of very gently bringing people in. So people won't be using SharePoint and Teams yet in a lot of cases. So we'll be using SharePoint to post all this stuff and get people in, get them aware of what's coming, plan this out so that people are fully aware of what's coming up, entice them in and get them, um, what's the word I'm looking for, enthused, um, while at the same time encouraging them into SharePoint, to the internet to get familiar. So it's all quite a similar picture as we go through. And um, in this particular industry, we, we have a number of clients across um, different locations in this industry. And we have examples where we've got lots of internal initiatives underway in um, an area that's got a multi-site internet in place. And there are different home pages out there um, for different parts of it in different regions and things like that. So Viva Amplify can therefore target all of those regions. And we can have news that is sent out globally even if people don't access the global homepage, they only focus on their own regional homepage. And then finally, another one, 
a large global organization that has multiple intranets in place. Um, they're a, a little bit um, sort of uh, uh, maybe fragmented in a sense in the way they manage this um, side of SharePoint. And so in that case as well, they may be different, completely separate intranets, but it doesn't matter because as long as I've got access to them, I can publish these articles and keep people globally in the loop on stuff so that we don't have that them and us thing. It starts to build that togetherness culture because all of these things with intranets especially, it's not just about giving people the tools and things they use. It's about building a better culture, fostering more of a togetherness approach to things. And it all helps with that. So the final part with me before I hand back to Jeremy is onboarding staff. So I've had a couple of questions from people in the past about so how, what, what do we do to implement this? And it's really, in, in principle, it's no different to how you would bring any other product in to your environment. You, you want to think about what are the problems that we're trying to solve? What is it that we want to achieve at the end of this? What's the vision for it? So what is the problem? Do we have too much email? Is our communication too one-way focused? Um, do we have a lack of central and consistent management? Are we having people doing things in different ways, in different tools, in different places? Do we want to consolidate that so that everyone is working consistently and we get a consistent, familial approach to everything that goes out to our organization, be it locally or globally? What are the benefits that we're going to achieve from this? Um, and thing that, all the things I've spoken about already, the single portal, multi-channel, centralized project approach, greater ROI in Microsoft 365 because you're using all these tools that you're paying for now. But then when it comes to training, um, I'm not sure there's really one right way for this, um, but my personal approach is you don't start the training with Beaver Amplify. You start the training with everything that comes before it. So making sure that people are familiar, those, so those that will be in here, because it's not just about communication stuff. Your IT department might be in here. You might have your finance team might be in here if you're launching a new finance system, getting them involved. It could be anyone. And so making sure that they are, first of all, familiar with SharePoint page design, the basics of how it works. It's um, If you're not already familiar with it, I provide a lot of training to a lot of people in page design. And within about 90 minutes, I can have people comfortable building their own pages themselves. But then we want to make sure people are familiar with the wider apps, lists, forms, planner, all those things that are going to help them with their campaigns, managing it like a project. And from there, we do Viva Amplify. We bring in that training on Viva Amplify to bring it all together and then get people on boarded to start to use this. But make sure that people have access to the tools that they need to do the job. So having all those points enabled. And there's a couple of points on that I'll come back to in a couple of slides time. But I'll hand over to Jeremy for the part that is um, not always the most fun topic of conversation, but is very, very important. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And uh, I guess on, on that previous slide, just, um, something you do a lot, isn't it, across all the different technologies we touch, adoption, change management, obviously so important in yeah. all of these tools. So the same messages apply. Um, yeah, I saw a question pop up earlier. Someone asked whether uh, Amplify would have been included in their standard Microsoft license. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately not. So uh, I guess I'm the bearer of bad news at this point. There are some costs associated with what you've just seen. So um, there is a package for the whole Viva suite. So if you've already invested in other parts of the Viva suite, you might uh, already be on that license plan you see on the right-hand side there, which would include Amplify amongst the other tools like um, Pulse and Goals and Viva Learning, for example. If you haven't, um, then that, that uh, plan on the left-hand side there would need to um, be applied across all of your staff. So essentially everyone who receives communications via Amplify would need to be licensed as part of that uh, Microsoft Viva Employee Communications and Communities Plan. So £1.64 per user per month, so a reasonable investment, um, but um, we can also look at the numbers across your staff numbers and you know, hopefully that will still stack up um, with the, the, the time savings and cost savings across your communications function. Uh, but there will obviously be some considerations on that. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're in a larger organisation, you won't pay that. And there is volume discounts. Yeah. So um, that number will change depending on the size of your organization. Yeah, that's a list pricing you'll see on Microsoft's website uh, yeah. on the side there. Uh, I can see we've got a few more questions coming in. But before we um, uh, go over to those, Alex, we've just got a few points of 
yeah. I guess, summary and note um, for anyone that might be interested in taking this further. Yep, and I think I answer at least one of the questions um, that I've seen pop up. Um, so, um, as Jeremy's just mentioned, everyone that receives communications through this will need a license. So you do have to license your organization. But another very, very, very important point is a lot of organizations turn off um, self-service creation of sites and teams. And if yours is one of those where that is turned off, you will need to think about how you can use Beaver Amplify. Because it creates all those things, if you've got it turned off, it won't work. So you will need to be in a position or be in an organization where they will allow you to either have selective approval, so individual am permitted to do that, or it would be incorporated into a request process you might already have in place. So somebody would create it on your behalf. And there's another point um, that I feel I should make um, with regards to workarounds. So I did try when I first started using this to create, um, I know that we've got some people in other countries that may not quite get this reference, but in Britain, what we might call the Tesco value version <laughs> of uh, Viva Amplify, where I didn't have that, but I used made for email and SharePoint, and I put the email address of the Teams channel or a Viva Engage community in, trying to use that to send to multiple mediums. It doesn't work. It won't let you. <laughs> I tried a lot, and I brought in some colleagues to try and cheat the system as well, but no, nah, didn't let me. So, yeah, you can't cheat it. And just a reminder as well, um, if you don't have access to the teams that you want to send to, you won't be able to send those communications to them. And I would imagine the same will be with Beaver Engage. If it's a private community that I'm not a member of, I'm unlikely to be able to send messages to it, but we'll see. Great stuff. Thanks, Alex. Well, we've got um, some last few questions which we can tackle at this point. Um, someone's asked about if they're using a SharePoint overlay project. I'm guessing that's for their intranet. Um, would that still kind of work with, with Amplify? Um, that should be OK. It depends on the product that you're using. Um, but if you have, um, say, if you're using tools like uh, uh, what are the ones like Live Tiles, BZ, whatever it might be, if they are based in SharePoint, um, I'd need to see it. That's a really good question, actually. I haven't thought about it. But if it's SharePoint based, then in theory, if you pub because this is just publishing a page, it should work in theory. Um, but to be completely honest, I'd need to see that in practice before I actually. Yeah, I, yes, I guess it yeah. depends how they store the data. It could yeah. vary per product. But yeah, we can certainly look at that with you if, you, if you'd like to, to see more on that. Uh, if you need to amend a SharePoint page published through Amplify, can you do that in Amplify, or would you need to go to each? SharePoint page, good I'm, question. I'm very glad that this person asked that because <laughs> I had forgotten to come at this point. Um, so if we publish something from Viva Amplify, it will go to SharePoint. I can go into SharePoint and modify it, but in Amplify, that's now locked because it's effectively a record. So every time I, if I publish something, it's marked as published, but from that point forth, in Amplify, I cannot edit or delete that publication. It is set in stone. But in SharePoint, it's essentially a copy. So I can go into SharePoint and modify it there if I need to. Yeah. Thank you for asking that, because I forgot to mention it earlier. Yeah, good question. Someone's asked about the analytics, and do you only get those if all the colleagues have a Viva Suite license? And yes, um, uh, I'm afraid that would be the case. Uh, it would rely on all of those people being licensed to get those benefits. Yeah, so yeah, all, all your staff do have to have a license for you to use this. But it's, it's quite confusing when you look into it, because we, we looked around a lot, and I, there's a colleague of mine that's a licensing specialist who helped me out with this, because I couldn't find a definitive answer, because I thought, well, surely it's just the communications team. But no, it is everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we've got another good question, which I think maybe we might need to park and come back to you um, uh, personally. Um, it, it's a, perhaps a bigger topic than we've got time to cover here today. <laughs> Um, unless you've got anything to add on that, um, Alex, I think maybe well, we'll come back to that one. Let's, let's read it anyway in case it's of interest. I know we're running short of time. But the question was um, about uh, the notion of governance of communication in a large 300,000 plus employee organization. So how would corporate communications teams retain governance over how things are communicated? And that's common look and feel, standardized vocabulary, multilingual language requirements, accessibility requirements. So with this, um, it's quite similar to how a lot of things are in SharePoint itself. I, all, I get asked a lot about accessibility in SharePoint, and it's something we do make sure that we emphasize in anything we build. 
but accessibility doesn't always just come down to the technology. Accessibility is also down to the author of the content. It can be down to simple things like, like not using images with text in them because screen readers can't use them. It's down to the verbosity of your articles, not making it war and peace and making it compartmentalize. So it's very, very difficult to govern that with technology. And usually it needs to be governed through guidance and review practices and having some official practice in place where there are certain review procedures that are there. So any organization wide communications, while technically I can't stop them, there should be a policy in place that people are clearly aware of that these people must approve anything that's going to go out organization wide before it does. Otherwise, we'll be having a little chat. Um, but yeah, so technically, you are limited to what you can stop. But with procedures in place, you can enable it. And things like look and feel and things like that. In Amplify, it's when I publish something, if I publish it to a site, it will take the branding of that site. So it will inherit that theme. So if we're using our corporate palette on a site over here, but we have an alternative version over here, when I publish to both of them, that news article will respect the, pa the, the palette of both of those sites. So it will look consistent. OK, thank you very much. Well, that brings us to a close. So um, all it remains to say really is thanks ever so much for being here. Thanks for your questions. We've really enjoyed seeing and answering them. Um, and um, we'd love to speak to you further if you've got more that you want to uh, uh, talk about or take a deeper dive into any of the things that we've covered up today. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'll be in touch uh, with people that have asked questions as well. Um, Alex, thank you for being here. Thanks for your insight thank and you. your company. Really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, look out for more webinars from us um, on some other topics in the future. Um, but yeah, that's all from us. So have a great afternoon and we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.